Hello everyone. Today we'll learn about plane transmission grating, Rayleigh criterion, and resolving power of a grating. What is a plane transmission grating? A plane transmission grating is an arrangement equivalent to a large number of parallel slits, capital N, of equal widths and separated from one another by equal opaque sources. These are primarily used to resolve two closely spaced spectral lines. So that is how a spectral grating or the plane transmission grating looks like. So you have opaque spaces and you have the transparent spaces from where light can come through. And you see uh, when we studied the end slit diffraction, from upper end slit diffraction. So this is what E and D are. D is the slit separation and E is the slit width. So here you see in the diagram, the white light can be resolved into different colors using a plane transmission grating. So it's a diffraction grating wherein you get a diffraction pattern. All the different colors bend at different angles and you get a spectrum here on the screen. So this is a very, very useful tool, I should say. So when we talk about plane transmission grating, we must understand what is called grating element. Grating element defines the periodicity of the plane transmission grating. It is given by the term E plus D. So as you see, E and D both are the length units. So E plus D is length basically or you can call it as in angstrom or millimeter. Also, if N is the number of rulings per rulings or lines per inch, then E plus D is equal to 2.54 by N. So that is how you see the relation between grating element and number of slits or number of lines on the grating. Next important topic is Rayleigh criterion for limit of resolution. So as I said, you use plane transmission grating to resolve two closely spaced lines. Now, what do we actually mean by resolving something or what is the limit of resolution? I should say. So according to the criterion, which is the Rayleigh criterion, the two nearby images or wavelengths are said to be just resolved when the position of central maxima of the one image coincides with the first secondary minima of the other and vice versa. So basically Rayleigh gave, gave this criterion that once when uh, you see the diagram here, when you have two different wavelengths like this, they are well separated. So this is what the instrument sees it as two images. So it is easily resolved. But what Rayleigh said is there is something called limit of resolution. This is when the central maxima of the first one, first image coincides with the first secondary minima of the other and vice versa. See, see this point. So here you have principal maxima of the first one coincided, coinciding with the secondary maxima, uh, secondary minima of the other one. So this is such a situation where this is the distance or called limit of resolution. At least you need this much separation between two images or two wavelengths to be able to resolve those two images. Now, Lesser than this, if there are two wavelengths or images, if the distance is lesser than the limit of resolution, then the images cannot be resolved according to the Rayleigh criterion. It is very important law and we'll be using this law criterion to find what is the resolving power of a grating. Now resolving power of a grating. So what is a resolving power? The ability of an instrument, optical instrument or type of film to separate or distinguish two closely located images or wavelengths is called resolving power. In general, 
the formula for resolving power is given as lambda by d lambda where d lambda is the spacing between two wavelengths so very simple example i can give you is so we can take the example of sodium light sodium light has two closely spaced wavelengths uh, 5890 angstrom and 5896 angstrom so in that case what lambda will be if we need to find the resolving power of an instrument which is needed to resolve those two lines you need the resolving power to be higher than that value what will be derived from here as you see resolving power has no units so in this case in the example i have given you just now lambda will be the average of two values that is 5890 and 5896 so that will be 5893 so lambda will be 5893 in that case what is d lambda d lambda will be the difference between these two wavelengths in our case this is 6 so the resolving power needed will be 5893 by 6 so that is a very simple example of resolving power but when we talk about grating we need to derive what is the resolving power we will use lambda by d lambda also so let's consider two closely spaced spectral lines with wavelengths lambda and lambda plus d lambda so as, as i showed in the rayleigh criterion also two images have different wavelengths lambda and lambda plus d lambda so using the rayleigh criterion we can equate the principal maxima of first one matching with the minima of the second one so we can equate their formulae their equations we already derived earlier the n slit diffraction case so we can write down these equations as e plus d sin theta plus d theta is equal to n lambda plus d lambda and n times e plus d sin theta plus d theta is equal to m lambda and we learned that m will have values n n plus 1 lambda so we equate these two conditions which are the principal maxima and uh, secondary minima conditions so we equate these two equations and we find what is lambda by d lambda so by equating we get this resolving power to be equal to small n times capital n so n is the order of the fringe and capital n is the number of slits number of lines on the grating hence resolving power of a grating depends on the order of the spectrum and the total number of lines of the grating surface so this is all about a resolving power of grating thank you